I'm not going to correct the assumption. I'm not going to challenge the assumption. I'm going to let it be what it is. Because at the end of the day, if that assumption helps you get more guests, if that assumption helps you become a guest, ride the wave. Welcome to Young the Ball Podcast. All right, so let's just dive in. So one thing that if we're not careful, we can get into a corner and we can feel that we want to be in front of more people, right? We want to be in, more, in front of more people. We all have something to say or something that we feel worth sharing if we've started a podcast or desire to start a podcast. Would you all agree? Yeah. Okay, okay. So we want to get into the trust circle. Anybody seen, remember the, anybody seen the Falkers? Right, right. You want to, you want to get in the trust circle, but sometimes it seems like we're outside and it's like this invisible barrier of like, how do we get in the inner circle? How do we make that happen? So the first thing, we have to build relationships with each other. Somebody might say, John, that sounds so cliche, but at the end of the day, I want you to think about it, right? Just really think about it. If you don't take the time to connect with somebody, how can you expect that person to give you their time? How can you expect that person to give you their energy? Or if, for some of us in the room, how can you expect that person to give you their money? Is that fair? Right? We do business with people we trust, like, and know. Would you all agree? Fair enough. Okay. I'm just making sure. Tanner, we doing good? My man, Tanner. All right. After you build the relationship, then there's a circle of trust. And I'm going to breeze through the presentation. At the end, I'm going to go really make sure that you all have tangible application. But building the relationship, it starts with, just like what Dave was talking about earlier, it starts with a connection point. We have to make a connection with somebody. What's your name, sir? Chris. Chris. I can say, hi, Chris, how you doing? That's a good looking black polo. Where'd you get that polo from, Chris? Got it at uh, uh, Dillard's. Got it at Dillard's. That's a connection. I have on a blue polo. Chris has on a black polo. Where'd you get your polo? I got my polo from this nice lady who does embroidery. Well, no, I had to pay her for it. <laughs> I definitely had to pay her for it, Chris. Connection. From there, then, that opens up the door to where we can begin to talk about other things, anything, right? So that helps us go from, out, from, the, from going where we were before to getting in the circle of trust. Then when we get in the circle of trust, now people will put you in the position to where you have the opportunity to leverage they're following, as well as you allowing them to leverage yours. On LinkedIn, they have something, it's called, you have to make a connection with somebody before you can even see who's in their network, right? So who their friends are, who the people they're connected to. But if the people don't accept your connection request, you will never see who's in their network. So leverage each other's following. And here's a quick example of what that looks like. On the left-hand side, this is one of my clients. His name is Dr. Derek Burgess. And Dr. Derek Burgess, he's an orthopedic surgeon, and he's the host of Time Out with the Sports Doctor. And Dr. Derek Burgess had the opportunity to meet this young man to the right-hand side. Uh, his name is Dino. I'm not sure if that's his real name or nickname, but that's his business, right? That's his business. And, and what he did was after they, they met, First, the guy said, how do I know that you're a real doctor? <laughs> and he said, well, I mean, here are my, my papers. Here's the degree. Right? What do you want to see? After they had the conversation, then they began to build a relationship. And then Dr. Burgess had him on his show. Why is this relevant? We're talking about leveraging each other's following. On Instagram, they have a feature where you can invite a collaborator. So basically, you're sharing a post. And it's going on Dr. Derek Burgess page, as well as it's going on the Dino Gentleman's page. Dr. Derek probably averages like maybe 70 likes on a post. On this post, he had 3,046. Leveraging each other's followings. Why is this relevant? Because Dino's friends are now commenting on the post. Dr. Derek can go back and then respond to the comments. And then now he can create the connection and then further build that authority, further solidify himself through the relationship. Is this making sense? 
helpful? Okay. And here, then here's another part, like I said, with LinkedIn, then you become a part of, of their network. On the left-hand side, that, that's Crystal Profit. I didn't know Crystal Profit from a can of beans like maybe two months ago, three months ago. I commented on one of Crystal's posts. I said, Crystal, I love the content you talk about. I love what you're sharing. I think you would be a great guest on my show. She sent me a DM, said, Jonathan, saw your comment about wanting to collab. Sounds really fun. Here's my email address. Send more details. So now, me and Crystal, when I see her at the conference, I'll say, hey, Crystal. She'll say, hey, Jonathan, because now we've built a relationship. Because when you become a guest on somebody's show, or when you, when you become a guest on somebody's show, or you have them as a guest on your show, you have a unique space in their heart. Like, you really do, because everybody doesn't get the opportunity to be interviewed. But everybody thinks they're a star in their own eyes. And you should, because you are. And then their credibility now is your credibility. On the right-hand side, anybody a fan of New York Yankees? Anybody? One and a half person? OK, excellent. OK, great, great, great. So on the right-hand side, that's Nick Swisher. I used to have a podcast called Beyond the Ball. And the focus was helping student athletes succeed beyond their degree. That's Nick Swisher, and he was a guest on my podcast. How was he a guest on my podcast? I was in a room on Clubhouse that he was in. He was speaking. I followed him on Clubhouse, and I'm going to walk you all through the strategy just after this. But then I reached out to him. He said, Jonathan, sounds good. I followed him. He followed me back. I was like, well, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. And then we had a conversation. He gave me his assistant's email. Boom. So now when people come and see my show, now they're going to just assume that there's a relationship between me and Nick. Is there a relationship? I mean, he was a guest on my podcast. I have an email address to, I guess, his right-hand man, right? So just it, 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 it's, it's a process because there, there's something that we have to understand. It's just when people see certain things, there's just a certain assumption. I'm not going to correct the assumption. I'm not going to challenge the assumption. I'm going to let it be what it is. Because at the end of the day, if that assumption helps you get more guests, if that assumption helps you become a guest, ride the wave. And then when you have the opportunity to talk with these people, you bring them on your show, you get that, that time before you do the interview and that time after you do the interview to where you can talk with them and you can see what their need is. Has anybody here ever been in a spot to where you needed help with something? Anybody? Raise your hand. Everybody raise your hand. Everybody raise your hand. OK. You get to hear their need, and then you get to connect them to a resource which can benefit them. It might be a free resource that you have. It might be coaching services that you offer. It might be the opportunity to connect them with other shows if they're, tr if they're trying to do a book tour, or they're trying to do a podcasting guesting tour. You now can connect them, and now you're going to be the person that helped a friend out in need. And you always remember the person that helped you out when you were in need. So lastly, here's, here's my process, OK? So I find the people on Twitter. And this is, this is if you don't know the people, this is if you don't have a following, wh whatever. Whatever excuse we might want to give ourselves, right? You find the people on Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, whatever platform works for you. You connect with them, right? And then you want to engage with their content. So like a, like a post, uh, comment something special. And of course, I would mention them in the comment. I like to always mention them in the comment so they see it. And then you send them a private message. I like to take out my phone, and I'll say, hey, Chris, what's going on, man? I saw you at PodFest. You had on that cool black shirt. Man, I just wanted to reach out to you. I see you have a podcast. I would love to learn more about you and more about your show. Video message. Chris responds back, hopefully, right, hopefully. And then we engage in a brief dialogue. Then I let Chris know, hey, Chris, I saw you. Chris, what's your podcast about? Uh, debt free. Being, debt free. Being debt free. OK, so I say, hey, Chris, you know, I was somebody who was in student loan debt, 100 k in student loan debt. I think I could bring value to your show by sharing my story. Are you open to having guests? And then Chris says, absolutely. absolutely. Then what do we do? We get them on the calendar. Helpful? Anybody, is that helpful? Yeah. Talk to me. Helpful?
Okay, okay, good deal.